Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Pool Guy Show. This is the start of the second season of my podcast, and I hope you found my podcast helpful. Today I'm going to be joined by Paul Hackett of H2 Flow Controls. They make the FlowViz Flow Meter. So we're going to go over this product in detail for you in this podcast. This week's podcast is brought to you by InuPools.com. InuPools has been helping pool owners find the right pool parts since 2001. With over 50,000 pool parts in stock, order online today and have your parts delivered right to your door. You can find my podcast directly on my website, or you can find it on my Buzzsprout link. You can also subscribe to it on iTunes and Google Play. And I also have a YouTube version of the podcast that I put up every week. Okay, I'm joined today by Paul Hackett from H2 Flow Controls. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm doing good, thanks, David. How are you? Good, good. Um, so I'm very familiar with your product. I use the FlowViz flow meter on my pool route. I've installed it. Uh, but can you tell the listeners about your product, the FlowViz flow meter? Yeah, thanks, David. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, join the podcast here. Well, I guess to start with, if you've ever used a FlowViz flow meter, you're already probably familiar with what sets it apart from other flow meters. However, if you've never used one before, let me be the first to tell you that the FlowViz is unlike any other flow meter out there, both in its in terms of its appearance and its operation. Before even installing the unit, something that's immediately obvious is the quality of the components and the construction of the FlowViz. This is something we feel is unmatched by any other mechanical flow meter available, and it uses the highest quality components such as UV inhibited polycarbonate for the lid, Astelue C276 for the precision spring and pivot pin, Viton for the flapper, peel, uh, flapper seal and so on. It's important for us that the product that our customers receive isn't just accurate but also reliable and we want them to feel that they've purchased a product that they can, that they can depend on for years to come. Uh, FlowViz also boasts a very high average accuracy and higher than any other available flow meter developed for the pool and spa industry. And in, in actual fact, the average is 97.9% across the entire model range. And this is something we're very proud of. A team of very bright developers was responsible for bringing the FlowViz, FlowViz to H2 Flow, and they worked tirelessly to ensure that we ended up with a product that was the most accurate and re reliable flow meter possible. Their efforts have result, resulted in what we have today, uh, which is the most accurate and reliable flow meter ever developed for this industry. But beyond the accuracy and robust design, there are a few important features that make FlowViz more than just a flow meter, and that really set it apart from the rest of the pack. First, our most popular models, the one and a half, two and two and a half inch units, are also fully functioning check valves. As water passes through the flow vase, its flapper starts to open, and the amount of which it opens depends on is de determined by the flow rate. On the rear of the flapper is a bright red indicator arm, which arcs up through the lid as the flow increases. On the top of the lid is a calibrated scale that indica indicates the flow rate. When the flow stops, the flapper closes and seals, preventing water from flowing back through the valve. No other flow meter offers this check valve feature. The second unique feature of the FlowViz is the velocity indicator. Next to the GPM readout on the scale is an indication of velocity in feet per second. Third and finally is a reliability factor. Unfortunately, one of the downsides that the industry has dealt with for many years with pitot tube devices is that calcium can build up in them and they cause them to stick. This is a non-issue with FlowViz. We're five years into the project, and I can honestly say that everybody at H2 Flow, myself included, is as excited today as we were uh, with FlowWiz on the day we launched it. In summary, David, I think that the product's key features that we should mention to your listeners are it's a unique mass flow meter design that makes it the only flow meter that can be installed without the need for straight pipe before and after. Indeed, it's able to be installed right in between 290s without any negative impact on its accuracy. And many of the people that we talk to in the industry particularly appreciate that feature. It's a flow meter that incorporates a check valve. In fact, it, that makes it two products in one. 
It has an easy to read scale that also provides an indication of velocity. It can be installed in any attitude, horizontal, vertical up, vertical down, even upside down. It was the first flow meter to be NSF 50 certified and remains the only NSF 50 level one flow meter in the market today. Um, and, and, and that is very important, uh, we feel, just to stress the point that it's extremely accurate. And, and NSF 50, for the listeners who don't know too much about the detail, there are five levels of accuracy available under NSF 50, with level one being the, the highest accuracy that you can achieve. And Flovis is the only one that's ever achieved level one. Um, and we even achieve level one when right in between two 90 degree elbows. It's corrosion resistant with using materials such as Hastelloy, C276 and Viton rated for indoor or outdoor use. It has a five-year warranty. We have scales in gallons per minute and liters per minute. And we, can, we even have models that you can retrofit to existing Jandi, Haywood, or Preya valve bodies. And there's minimal head loss. And finally, David, I'm delighted to say that the product was awarded a patent in 2014. Pretty incredible, uh, all those details about the product. Uh, I, you know, I, I can vouch for the definitely the re reliability of the flow meter. I have one on my equipment. I have actually two in two different locations that I use for testing. And when I first got the product, I was testing it with the with putting two on the same pool equipment. And I must say that the flow is very accurate um, on both parts where I put them on the uh, pipe. Now you mentioned that um, the gallons per minute. If you're not in the United States, you would use uh, liters per minute. And what about for the people with uh, pools, pools that aren't in the U.S.? Can they use a flow meter also? Yeah, actually what we found in the European markets in particular, and now as we're entering the Asian markets, is that many of the pipes over there are different sizes to what we're familiar with here in North America. For example, we're, we're used to imperial size pipes, inch and a half, two, two and a half inch, and so on. In Europe, uh, for example, they don't use imperial size piping. Maybe in the UK they do, but uh, in mainland Europe they use metric piping, which is sized in DN40, which would be our closest equivalent to inch and a half, DN50, DN65, DN80, DN100, and so on. So actually, you cannot take a standard imperial size valve body and use metric pipe on it. So here at H2 Flow, we've developed FlowViz models for metric piping. Besides the, the product itself and all the great features, why would someone need to install FlowViz flow meter at their pool equipment? That's a great question. And, and one of the things that we're seeing as the fasting, fastest growing segment in the pool industry today is the installation of variable speed pumps. And of course, the number one reason why people invest in these devices is to save energy. And they do a great job of it. For example, if you decrease the speed of a pump, a variable speed pump by 20%, you'll save almost 50% in the electrical energy consumed. However, without a reliable and accurate flow meter, setting the speed is pure guesswork. Why invest in one of these great products if you're then going to guess what the speed needs to be set at? And of course, if we move on to commercial and public pools, it's of course mandatory that are working flow meter be installed. And in fact, some counties in the U.S. have even now insisted that the flow meter should be NSF certified. Uh, and that's to a standard that we're very proud to have pioneered. We worked with NSF and some of the other people in the flow meter industry, of course, but we, we developed a standard to which flow meters can now be tested. And to go back on the variable speed pump that you mentioned, uh, just guessing if you don't have a flow meter, a lot of people will ask me, you know, I, I my pool's, you know, 15,000 gallons, and I run my pump at 2,100 RPMs. How long should I set it? Well, there's no real way to know it at a flow meter, right? No, because you don't know what the head is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, every, every guy who builds a pool will build it differently to the other guy. You know, some use sweep, sweep fittings, some use hard 90s, for example. Uh, nobody counts the number of 90s they use, so they, nobody knows the head. And of course, the flow is going to be different de determined by the, as determined by the head. If you're going to purchase a flow viz, is it easy to install it in your pool? Yeah, I mean, for example, on new construction, it's real simple. It's just, it's no more difficult than installing a 
a two-way valve or a, a 90 degree elbow but for retrofitting I wouldn't say it's a challenge but it, you do have to uh, deal with one issue that can cause you to have to put unions in there so for example you need to cut out a section of pipe just big enough to put Clovis in but if you then cannot spread the pipe to allow you to fit the the flow is in there you may, you're going to have to probably put a union either side of the flow is again not a difficult thing and and it does if you live in some of the northern climates that that those unions can enable you to take it out during the winter yeah and then you've mentioned the retrofit kit for the existing check valves um, can you touch on that one more time yeah um a lot of times you'll visit a pool and you'll see people have used a a jandy check valve or a jandy two-way valve you can simply pop the lid off that and buy the Flovis retrofit kit. Um, use the eight screws that you took out of the original lid and screw the Flovis back in its place, and you now have converted it to a check valve and a flow meter. And I think most builders do put a check valve somewhere in the pool equipment um, on the uh, pool plumbing. Right, and and really with Flovis, and this is actually a surprising question that I get asked: Does it matter where you put it? Um, Unlike pressure, flow is flow. I mean, people in the back of the bus are going the same speed as the people in the front of the bus. The only real restriction we like to mention to people about where not to put flow is, is where you've got any of these hockey puck um, uh, chlorine feeders. Um, some of those can be problematic in terms of the injection point. They can leak when the pump shuts off, they leach chlorine back into the flow stream, um, and it can be problematic to all equipment, not just flow vis, but we try to encourage people not to put flow vis near the injection point of these uh, these um, erosion style feeders. Yeah, they're, I think they're referred to as inline chlorinators in most areas. So, uh, so what sizes are available for the um, flow vis flow meter? Uh, currently today we have models, of, apart from the retrofit kits, uh, we have Flovis available for inch and a half, two, two and a half inch, three and four inch. And actually the two and two and a half inch is a combined unit um, in one model with two inch, the two inch scale on one side of the lid and two and a half inch on the other side. And that by far is the most common unit we supply, probably 80% of what we supply today is that model what we call FV-C. We also have three and four inch models. Um, they're all NSF 50 certified uh, for Schedule 80 pipe. And the two, the in, inch and a half, um, two, two and a half inch or for Schedule 40 pipe. Although I will add that we've been doing some recent testing and because it is a flat, a mass flow meter, we have found that the readings for Schedule 80 pipe are identical to the Schedule 40 pipe. So we're going to go back to NSF and probably get the units recertified for Schedule 40 slash 80 pipe. Where can they purchase the Flovis? I know that a lot of the uh, pool service men want to get them for their accounts. Yeah, it's it's in distribution throughout the country. Um, all of the top distributors have it. And we always tell customers, if you're struggling to buy it anywhere, give us a call. We'll find a local stockist for you. And if all else fails, we'll take care of you direct. Okay. But we, we prefer to have our customers go through established distribution channels. Okay, and a, a, a regular homeowner that wants to install one, they can find one online or in the pool store? They can, and of course, this is a challenge for the pool industry today. We, we cannot uh, control where our distributors put it. Uh, it could be on Amazon. It could be... Uh, it could be on eBay. Uh, we don't control that. We can't control it. But yes, you you should not have a problem in acquiring a Flovis. Okay. And so, where can a listener go to get more information about the Flovis flow meter? Well, we'd encourage uh, your listeners to go to our website, which is www.h2flow.net, and that's the letter H, the number two, f l o w dot net, and here they'll find a very helpful video. A uh, short video, a couple of minutes long, as well as a host of literature such as brochures, technical data sheets, and an, and an instruction manual. Yeah, that's a lot of great information, uh, Paul. Um, thank you for your time and, and for sharing about the Flovis flow meter. 
And again, I can really route for this product. I use it on my pool route, and I know it's uh, very accurate. And I thank you again for your time. Appreciate it, David. Thank you. Thank you. So again, I've used the FlowViz on my pool route. I have two of the units on my personal pool, and they're performing excellent. I think the design and the overall look and quality of the product is by itself enough to have it installed. And like Paul said, if you have a variable speed pump, the only way to really know how to set it to save your the most money is to know the flow gallons per minute going through the pool. And you can find several videos on the flow viz on my YouTube channel. I have a video with an overview going over some of the product details. I also have an installation video after the fact if you have your pool plumbed already. I show you how to install it with the unions that Paul was talking about earlier in the podcast. I also have a video on the retrofit kit. And I have a couple of videos showing you how to get the flow rate and set your variable speed pump to maximize your energy savings. And so if you have any more interest in the flow viz, you can definitely check out those videos. If you're watching the YouTube version of this podcast, I'll have links to those videos posted in the description. And if you need more help with your pool care, you can find my ebook on my website. I sell the ebook for $9.99. It's 170 pages and it's full of all the things you need to know about your swimming pool from chemistry to cleaning to problems you may run into with the equipment or a green pool. All this is covered in the ebook and again it's sold for a low price of $9.99. And I will also send you the PDF version, downloadable version upon request. And if you need further help and you're in the pool service industry, you can join me on my Patreon site. On the site, for $10 a month, you can text me in real time. For $20 a month, you can actually call me and also text me in real time. You also get a copy of the ebook. You'll be eligible to join the Group Me app. And this app, I have about 45 pool guys and gals. And you can post a question here and we'll be happy to answer it. In real time also and if you don't have liability insurance you can also get a discounted rate by joining my group from SPPA or SPA so all this is on my website also swimmingpoollearning.com you can find my ebook you can also find a link to the patreon page if you would like to join it if you're a pool service professional thanks for listening to the podcast here the first podcast of my second season doing the podcast have a great rest of your week and god bless the Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show.